Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets heard them, the bombs bursting. Broadcast is an official production of the Faulkner Sports Network. So later in the game, it'll be about every two or three minutes where he can get that. Yeah. Um, the ASOL ult is going to come out. Mr. Gunn going to interrupt the Q channel, though. Uh, Syndra getting on the on the Aurelian Soul. The set getting melted down. Chapman is just also low. The Syndra completely zoning everybody off on the back line. That's going to be a complete team sweep. Does have his ultimate. Going to ult the Annie. They go into the death realm. We can see them on, on our screen, but I promise you that the players in game cannot. For a uh, second, I was worried because I Annie is going to die. Um, Garen does have the ultimate. They're going to have to be a little bit careful, but as long as they kite this out, be careful. Um, the Oriana should should have enough to, to survive and to kill him, and they do. Wait, and it looks like there's going to be a team fight here, and uh, Immune to Flame is able wow. to take down one of theirs. Oh, wow. Really? Excellent team fight. Uh, so, we had a really big, Orin had a really big stun there early on uh, with that ultimate, just stunning essentially the entire team. And a little bit annoying to deal with. Big Orion Shockwave though, gonna land on three, instantly one-shotting two, including that Aphelios. Yes. All of the carries are down. That is what Falkner needed so desperately. The Kane is likely gonna be picked up. I can't imagine that he gets out under any circumstance. I am excited, thankful that you're watching this even though we're not live streaming right now. So whatever time that you are watching it, you're welcome for us being here for you. This is my lovely co-host and assistant and mentor, Rafe Thrash. Rafe, what do you know about this team that we're fighting? What is their full name? Southern Illinois at Edwardsville. I think the Cougars. Almost there. You missed one part that I don't remember either and that's okay. And uh, I am I'm I'm wondering right now what the changeup will be because we saw last week how they swapped on the second game they put Isaac back in the top lane. Mm -hmm. I, did, I I'm curious to see if he's going back top again or jungle if they fixed the problem that they saw or what. what I think doing? that might have been more of a desperation move, just a last last ditch effort. I think they're gonna stick with Moniker in the top lane. I think they're gonna keep Femberger in the jungle. Um, just the same typical lane assignments that we saw in week two when they were able to get that win. I think that's kind of what we can expect to see tonight. Uh, I, I don't expect anything too crazy in terms of drafts. I know that they've been practicing up a couple new champions, you know, so as the newer players kind of grow into the game. But I don't think we're going to see anything too out of the ordinary from what we've already seen. Right. No, I, I agree with that. And I'd also like to meet our team. So can we get those introductions? Playing mid lane, the captain, Brisby Meniscus, Charlie Greeks. On top lane, the lieutenant, Finberger, Isaac Zoo. Playing support, Zombie, Abby Bonyolin. On ADC, Kaizen, Josh. Elchi, the jungler, I'm blue, Seth McCoy. Oh, are we back? Who knows? Who turned out the lights? 
I can't hear you. It's too dark. Or in is here. that on our end? No, <gasps> we're good now. We're good. Okay. But uh, that that's our team for you. Uh, wonderful star lineup right there. Our best five League of Legends players out of mm -hmm. five League of Legends players right here, ready to face off against Cougars. Very scary. But I think I think my list, my little co-host assistant person was right in saying that Isaac will probably be going back jungle, something mm -hmm. that they've practiced a little bit more on. But do you think that that if they do get desperate again, that is something that they would easily go back to is Isaac topside? I mean... You kind of have to look at it in two ways. Last week was was a pretty rough shellac in game one. Game two, there was some more hope. Um, so I think if game one goes really bad, maybe a move Isaac into the top lane, see if you can get him one, one of his comfort picks. But uh, for the purposes of learning, it's always better to, to play out the dedicated lane assignments as much as you possibly can, right? And so if nothing else, we should expect to see everybody start in their traditional roles, at least for the first game, just in in the sake of learning in a competitive environment. No, I, I agree with that. But at the same time, like there are still mistakes in the second game. It, it definitely felt closer. But uh, do you, I, I wonder if they were practicing that just as a backup plan or I, I don't. The only thing that I am sad about is that Faulkner doesn't have specific roles for each person yet. Like they're still trying to figure it out, mm -hmm. and the season the season well on the way, and so they they need to really like get a grip on who's going where so that they can really zone in on okay I'm gonna learn this character this character this character if they ban this person I'm going this mm -hmm. and not really have to worry about okay what do I need to know about this lane what do I need to know in this lane what do I need to do differently especially for those new character those new uh people on our roster they they really just need to focus on, on what is my job in this role what do i need to do in the next game that i didn't do this game and they i i think that they would easily be able to come back and say okay let's improve let's keep let's keep working on this but they need to stick with what they have that's what i think no i i 100 agree and like i was saying earlier i i do think that last week it was just sort of a last plea. I, I don't think it was practiced. I think it was based off of the fact that Isaac asked to maybe switch it up in the top lane because that was such a big contentious lane in game number one. Mm. That was where the Darius just spiraled out of control too much for anyone to be able to handle. And so sticking him up there for a little bit of damage control was useful. Um, but I... I don't think that we're going to see it very much. I don't think it was practiced. I don't think it was practiced this week. Mm -hmm. um, I I agree with what you were saying. I think they're just going to put everybody back where they're supposed to be, let them learn, make the week beforehead of preparation a little bit simpler, only having to learn one role. And, and you know, in League of Legends, it's already complex enough. You're already playing. You might, you'll, you might only play one character, but the characters that you're going to fight and all the interactions that happen are completely boundless. True. And it, it makes it rough enough for new players to pick up the game in a single role, much less where we've seen Moniker play two different roles now. Right. No, I I agree with that. And as I say, oh, you see him right there. Look at him. Look at those so, guys. So fun. So full of energy. He's full of life. We see Charlie on the left side, team captain, Isaac in the middle, Josh Chiaki on the far wow. right. Chow Chi. That's my smash captain. Oh, I got to stand up for him. That's my bad. I was I was thinking of a, a player on the Overwatch team whose name is <laughs> Chiachi. That's that's my own fault. I'm sorry, Josh. When you if you're listening to this, that's his brother on the Overwatch team. No, Josh is also on the. I know I know who's on the Overwatch team. My now. bad. My All bad. Right. My bad. But we're we're talking about League of Legends right here, and uh, they're having fun. Oh, look at them. They're they're getting they're giggling. Excited. They're laughing. They're, they're in good spirits. I like it. That's what you want to see in a team right before a game. Then we have Seth. I'm blue in the middle, and Zombie on the far left. What kind of comps oh, were selected? Oh, okay. There we go. That's kind of what Moniker we were expecting. Side, yep. We do have Moniker in the top. We do have Isaac Fenberg in the jungle running Ghost Zinzao. Smite on the Zenzao. Very aggressive <laughs> oh. sort of pick right into the Ghost Hecarim. This is going to be a moving jungle. And we got the, the way support that actually 
looked pretty good on Zombie. No, uh, I agree. And, I agree. And, we have Cassio yeah. in the mid lane, Cassiopeia with Frisbee Meniscus. But that means that the Varus has to go damage. It cannot go AP damage because that would be detrimental to. That would just be a whole lot of. You don't of really AP. see a whole lot of ability power based Varus builds, though, anymore, do you? Fair amount? Yeah, I, I think it's a fair amount. One thing I can't say I've, I've heard of too often recently is that Silas Top for southern is it illinois or indiana uh south illinois, illinois. i knew it i knew just it. call them the cougars yeah okay fair enough uh but i i'd agree with you but at the same time that is very tricky uh moniker's top side he's gonna have to be careful of the heel factor on that silas mm -hmm. um that silas is actually gonna win a lot of trades early because moniker on malphite is i mean it malphite early isn't that good is it no, no. But he has enough tools with the the move speed to to kind of space himself out. Yeah. And as long as he's able to dodge that that chain from Silas, mm. he should be okay in terms of not getting chunked out too heavily too early. Oof. Now, That's what I did see, time. I I've been cheating a little bit and looking at some of our player cameras. <laughs> we there was some sort of loading issue. It just took a tremendous amount of time to get into the game. It could potentially mean that somebody from the Cougars was not able to connect properly. And as a result, it kind of glitched out our spectator delay mm. and, and kicked us out. So we're going to get right back in. doesn't mean that three-minute timer will start back up, but I do see they have finally gotten into game. I don't know yet if there's been any disconnects or connection issues from the, the opposing side. We'll kind of have to wait for some further word on that. But we're we're gonna try our best to get back into it as quick as we can. It looks like Josh is having some technical issues as well, and they're working on getting that fixed. And I I don't even know what's going on anymore. But that's okay. We'll get it sorted out. I have hundred percent hope. What is faith. one more issue? Yeah, I mean, you know what? We'll figure it out. Nothing we can't handle. They're still in the game though. The game has not paused. The game did not pause yet. That's fair enough. I mean. They said, you know what, Josh, we'll figure it out fast enough. Rock on. We're good. Uh, and so no delay of game there. That's wonderful news. I am and very comforted by th what we saw in Champions yeah. Select, though, in the loading screen. That's kind of exactly what I was hoping for. We've got Moniker on a tank in the top lane, someone you can just kind of hunker down with and farm up, and he has a really useful ultimate. He has one job in a fight. Yeah. It's very clear cut. Uh, you know, Isaac is on somebody that he can potentially carry very strongly with. We have a very good backup plan in the mid lane, very strong scaling there. And uh, at the same time, that Silas is going to be scary. Stealing that Malphite ult, stealing, stealing Varus ult, stealing oh, Zenzhou ult. Yes, that is so that's true. That's going to be scary. You know, if he gets ahead, that's going to be detrimental. Because, so that Malphite needs to stay very safe. Uh, mm -hmm. Take fights that he knows he can take. Have the Zen Zhao, who's who's only really good early game, to do his job and massacre the map. And uh, once we get once we get a good Zen Zhao lead, because that's what Finberg specializes in. Well, I'm expecting like early invades. That jungle is not going to be present at all, really, compared to Finberg. And mm -hmm. I'm expecting for there has been a pause. Dang it! So, hey guys, something is very uh, awry. All those technical issues right now, but uh, this is body. Uh, this is Coach Koffer, by the way. Uh, did want to announce that the Smash White team has won its game by default. The other team never showed, so we do have a W. Would it kill for a Smash blue Rumble. team not to show up? <laughs> anyway, just wanted to give that update. Congratulations to the Smash White team. Woo! A well-earned victory. And we are in game right well, now. Well, in, in game behind three minutes before the pause don't yet know what the the primary issue there was but i doubt we'll find out yeah and you know riot recently shared a rather interesting stat one of the the developers of the game pretty regularly streams and answers a lot of questions about uh about whatever fans are wanting to know about and so they wanted to know what is the statistically worst win rate in the game, in terms of counter pick, do you want to know what that answer was, Zane? What? If your team has a Malphite and the other team has a Silas, in any lane, you have the lowest chance of winning in all of League of Legends. Well, let's change those odds right That's here, right, right. now. 
<laughs> That's right. That is not a very optimistic <laughs> statistic. Uh, you were just talking about how dangerous that Malphite ult can potentially be in the hands of that Silas, mm. especially if he gets ahead. Very true. And you know what? That's that is just something that we're gonna need to look out for. But they're warding for that Zinzo. They know they they know that he's gonna wanna early invade. Mm -hmm. Uh they're gonna see him on that ward there. I don't know if Silas is gonna pop back or not. I think they're just gonna trade Red Buff for Red Oh, Buff. Silas is moving back. Oh Silas does not care about his wave at all. Moniker seems to have trouble right now. He's under tower. Finberg is looking terribly low. And this is does oh, that, not look that's at that's a that's a dead Isaac. He, yeah, he, That's he has terrible. Ghost, but and Cassiopeia has priority, but I mean, there's not much he could do against that one. Uh, maybe a That's little bit of an earlier blood. move. I don't know. It's That's hard to say. That's first blood over to the Silas, already dangerous. And Moniker, see, oh, oh, you can't Frisbee. stand in that. Frisbee. That is not a trade that you can take. That Aurelian Soul hitting level two and Cassiopeia just having. Frisbee got locked down. Oh. And another trade getting... in the bot lane, but this is dangerous because this, they have level two above us. We see Isaac was asking for a game restart oh. uh, due to some some technical issues. Oh. A few moments later. Oh. 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 Welcome. We're finally back. Oh. Oh, it's been too long bad since news. We talked about League of Legends. <laughs> bad news, friends. Unfortunately, we are not able to get the restart out. Uh, Faulkner is just going to have to take the early deficit. That's okay, though. Oh, no. Uh, oh. oh, no. Well, hey, at least their gameplay is yeah. fine for now. This is just on us. Uh, honestly, got no idea what's going on. But we can talk about what's happened so far. Oh, there it is again. Yes. Let's... All right, so they resume the game. Uh, Frisbee needs to play a little bit safer than that. He's already taken a ton of damage. And that's an early level Aurelian Soul too. Silas going in for an early trade against the Malphite, but Malphite is doing well to hold his own ground here. That was honestly a bad trade for the Silas. Before because... that Silas hits level three, I think his trades are significantly less strong. And also before his first intermediate power spike with the alternator. Well, also this Silas just wanted to fight Malphite in our own wave. And we also just see oh. the the... He's just hyper aggressive right now. We need to get some anti heal on that Malphite as soon as possible. Moniker accidentally hits the minion there with his Q, but that's not the end of the world right there. He has a biscuit to build his health back up. And that's actually a very good idea by Zombie to get some vision there. Um, they need to be very cautious. Level three Pantheon. Another another tussle happening in the top side, but that Silas is just going to outheal the Malphite all day long. He cannot take those kinds of trades like that. He needs to be able to dodge the the chains that Silas is throwing out. And uh, our our Zinsa is trying to get back in the game, but that is just a huge lead to Hecarim in the early game. But Zinzao could still win a trade right now. Hecarim hasn't had a chance to spend that money yet. But the Silas did, in fact, go back and get a Sheen at four minutes, which is crazy already. But uh, Silas TP used. Hecarim has no ghost. Moniker is going to be in trouble here. He flashes a safety. Good idea. And we have another tussle going down in the bot side. And just a... Uh... A pretty rough start here overall from Faulkner, looking to see how they can sort of climb their way back in. We also are having a little bit of, of noise difficulty after that pause. It it never quite uh, came back up properly, unfortunately. So production working hard to fix that right now. I appreciate them very much. Frisbee Meniscus going to have to be really mindful of trading inside of that Aurelian Soul Dark Star just because it, it will like pull him back in. And uh, trades in that are typically a lot less favorable. Aurelian Soul loves to single target focus as much as Cassiopeia does. Yep. And we, we see this. The Silas is just trying to get some poke damage down, building up building up his uh, his level right there. But Moniker's doing a great job at keeping him at bay, not trading too, too hard, except for right oh. now. That is a huge tussle. Yeah, it's really... It, it's That's difficult. It's difficult sometimes to avoid those extended trades when they do jump in on you. You want to kind of throw everything that you have at them. But in the in the case of Moniker, they're just not Ooh, useful. Hecarim coming from behind Frisbee, there. He and that's, does not get out. Yeah, that's that's dead. Flash, flash used by Frisbee right there. But uh, that's just the Hecarim. That's a Hecarim gank in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. You 
Oh, goodness. That is... Uh, oh, that's a good fear by Zombie. That's some good peel. Zombie doing well to shield her ADC, because even if the Pantheon does hit his Q on the ADC, it'd be less damage. Oh, there we go. Game sound, sound is back again. online. Ah, sound. Thank you, production. Woohoo! We love production. That's, that's Mr. Gabe for you. He's doing his hard, hard at work job. Ah, ah, sorry, sorry. That's not that one. He's going in. He's going to get another kill. He's going to flash out, too, but he, oh. that means he has no summoner spells. He's going to back, but that is huge for the Cougars right now. Silas is just getting uh, scarier and scarier by the minute. He's going he's, he's gonna to be hurting us, but uh, we got we to gotta find out something that works against him is anti -heal. He He relies a lot on his W, which allows him to dash to one of our characters, do a ton of damage, and heal himself at the same time. If we get items that include anti-heal, we should be in a better position than uh, if we just ignore the science and try to out damage him. Right now we see I'm Blue is kind of looking pretty low in the bot side. Kais is looking for a little little surprise attack, but Finberg's trying to take the Void Grubs. Oh, uh, really he's just getting like starved out. out. Finberg has no choice but to go in there. He is just, he's dead. Cassio P trying to clean up a little bit on the back side, but she's not going to really damage either. That's tough. A difficult way to start out the game here. And, but, and they seem to be holding on to their lead pretty well. They are they're they're hurting us pretty bad. But they honestly, scale up pretty well too. For really and Soul, he's gonna keep stacking. Oh, Silas oh, is gonna Hunter keep getting those yet. ultimates. He's trying to get out. He's just doing that right here. There, there's no reason why he should get out there. But he didn't have flash, he didn't have ult. He was just trying to get level six, but that wave was really Topside a huge deficit right now because of that CS difference. Yep. Zero two top, zero two jungle, zero two mid. Bot lane sort of uh, just surviving here, but still down gold, will be down a, a good chunk of those minion kills. And what we were talking about, what we feared most was that Silas getting an early game lead and Hecarim being able to get a piece of it and move it around the map. And that's exactly what we've seen so far. Uh, not an optimal start from Faulkner. It'll it'll have to, to be a pretty solid rest of the game for them, not a whole lot more room for error. They look like they're grouping up for a dragon take, but that Hecarim is waiting in the wings for, for a possibility there. Uh, Frisbee sees the control, we're taking it out, taking the universe. He's stepping really far up, he has no mana. Yep, yep, uh, they're, they're stepping back right now. They should not fight this, they know this, they're back now. They don't Five and Frisbee steps in a little bit too far. They're gonna look for a trade here, but Aurelian Soul just flies in real easily. Uh, Frisbee looking very low. Oh, Flash and Ignite used very skillfully. Uh, uh, a little bit overkill, I think. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, but, I mean, you know. That they got another kill, and that, that's another death to Cassiopeia. That's a wave ruin for Cassiopeia in the mid wave. Uh, Aurelian Soul is just a, a ganking beast right now because he has such amazing potential to move around the map. And this is looking rough right now. Falkner, never impossible, but we, we need to find a good trade. We need to find a good fight and get a kill. Get some gold shuffled into our Zen Zap. Get some gold shuffled into our Cassiopeia. Bars, people that will carry us into the, into the late game. One thing that I think that would be really useful for a monitor to learn if he does want to play this this lose lane win game sort of, of tank play in the top lane, which is completely viable. Tons of people do it all the time. Yeah. Uh, is learning how to freeze that wave right in front of his tower so he's not having to step up to get these last hits because so many times we've seen him suffer from uh, just not necessarily a lack of vision in top lane but a lack of ability to do anything about it. Like right now, right even now. he has to step right into the waiting arms of the Silas just who's just hiding in a bush and is gonna immediately punish him. Ooh, now he's gonna miss everything, Monica, but it's not gonna matter. It really just doesn't matter with how many items he has. Uh, Monica does not have any magic resistance yet, and he doesn't. And he doesn't. Uh, he likely have, won't build match for a while, unfortunately. Yeah, no. Uh, but I mean, there, there's just not much he can do there. There's already a 50 minion difference in the top lane. Finberg is doing everything he can to catch up in the jungle, but that means that he can't really think as much. And there's just not many options there. 
Let's do to another Hecarim gank. Uh, that's just... That is tough to deal with right now. Especially, uh, like, I think everyone needs to just learn how to freeze away because mm -hmm. even the bot side is, is struggling right now. Because, well, I mean, the bot side is doing great because they're keeping up the CS, but they are needing to step up where the Hecarim could just come through the tri bush where they didn't have any vision. Take your time, and Kaiser. ult them instead, get a double kill instead of looking mid, but that mid lane is looking rough right now. They're really in soul and Silas and Hecarim look very scary. Uh, the Kaisa, not so much right now, which is good, but uh, she I don't know how much it. she'll be needed. Yeah, uh, uh, Zen Zhao is bot side to defend the tower, but that means Void Grubs are going to be uncontested for Cougars right now. That, that will mean they're able to get a, a five stack of the grubs, means a lot of pushing power. And considering they're already so far ahead and both of their solo lanes is really, really dangerous. Things go off the handle really quick. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that, but uh, I, I think our saving grace might be if we get a few kills in the spot side. Uh, maybe maybe a, a shutdown or two onto the Aurelian Soul, catch him out, maybe with the Zenzao gang. Uh, they're looking right now, they they really want this Pantheon right here, but Pantheon's going to be a hard to kill, especially under his tower. They're going to look for it anyways. This is... Mm, they kind of showed their hand a little, they, really. They did. The Pantheon's just going to be able to back out super easily right now. Oh, Last but... used by Frisbee. Uh, oh, he's done. They're gonna get him, but wow, that's, yeah. that's a lot used by the player, but that's a good start, a good way to funnel some gold into this attack. They're going to push bot side in pretty heavily here, but I'm blue getting very low. Aurelian Soul just had a free way to push on flash use. Very oh, the tower's still the charged side. up. Oh, that was some excellent damage, but the head curve shows up. He's, he's looking for a little sweep. Hecker might, Hecker might find a little pick on the with the ultimate. Oh, oh the knockout oh. comes out, and it's enough. That's an excellent trade. They're shading One more auto's going to do it. There we go. That's an excellent fight for us. But however, the Pantheon oh, and that's the Lillian Soul are here again. So it is just going to be a two for two trade right there. But Janitorial oh. squad coming in. We but... got a shut down on the Hecker, and we got a kill on Pantheon, mm -hmm. and we got a kill on the Kai'Sa. That's what's important right now. Yep, and actually, they, uh, Southern Illinois expended quite a lot of resource. Oh, there is significant internet problems happening right now. Oh, no. Three weeks later. They actually got the game unpaused uh, for our players in the <laughs> arena. That's why you see them so focused right now. But uh, uh, for us, unfortunately, we're getting loaded back up. Stuck. Oh! No, we're getting loaded back up. We're Oh, we're back There we it. go. Booyah. Uh, looks like uh, the other team has gotten two more kills since we've been gone. Uh, Morris just tried Frisbee. Good turnaround, but I don't know how much it's going to matter. They're really so very strong, very powerful. And I don't think Frisbee is going to win any more 1v1s against that really. So that's just, that's a lot of damage. Ooh, Zenzao waiting, waiting for the mouth idol, but that's great follow-up by the Zenzao, but will be enough onto the, onto the Silas. They don't have any life. Uh, oh, that's just a lot enough sustained of damage. damage. That's excellent work by the That's Zenzao. a lot of money going into Femburger. Oh, that's yeah. what we like to see, a big shutdown there. 400 additional gold. Yep, and uh, I'm, I'm very excited to see that because Finberg can't actually outsustain this Hecarim right now. No matter the gold difference, it doesn't oh, matter. He's he dead. Get him. He just has to wait for cooldowns. <laughs> that's Finberg for you. Come on. There's yeah. the dash. And there's oh, that's the kill. Hype. That's awesome. Let's go. I'm hype again. See, this is what I'm talking about. It's the tiny details that matter. Finberg getting gold is great for us, but we need to stop the bleeding in every other lane. That means and that gives us great access to this Rift Herald, which does have an objective bounty on it because we're behind. However, the other team does have the Aurelian Soul and Pantheon. They can both hop on it at any time that they want. And you do see the Pantheon is moving up towards that mid lane, yep. perhaps looking at the Cassiopeia. Yep. And they have Herald vision on the Rift Herald. We see Silas moving down. But our Malphite moving up as well. Uh, we, we oh, I don't think that we should fight this because we just don't have that power yet. Oh, the oh, skies a, descend. Giant ultimate. Giant ultimates by both the Silas and the Aurelian Soul. Uh, both of them go down. 
I smeal bacon and chasing oh. after Moniker. You just have to run more straight up there. That way you can kind of at least force him to reset his flying there. But honestly, not a lot to be done. Just a, a, a play on top of the Cougar's vision. Excellent pick. Are going to get a compensation they, kill in the bot lane. They saw that it was a, a 2v1. They took advantage of that completely, especially because of how short range that Kaisa can get. And honestly, I, I don't even care about that fight because that was unlucky because Finberg didn't have his ult up yet. Cassiopeia wasn't uh, in a good place for her ult and Moniker didn't have his ult either. And so that was just a losing fight. They they probably shouldn't have uh, been there at the Rift Herald. That was probably a little bit too eager. So we did see Finberger just pick up his first control ward. Uh, yeah. Oh, maybe not they're first, looking but, oh. to another pick for Silas. Silas yeah. is I think he's gone again. Out. But no, he, he doesn't have flash. That's amazing work. Uh, Gold goes on to the Malphite, gets him back into the game a little bit more maybe. And and we're looking at a fight here. They are not giving this game up without a fight. I, I will say that they are fighting tooth and nail right now. That's Faulkner for you. Yeah, that Aurelian so Soul is starting to look really scary. Has hit his two item power spike 18 minutes into the game and, and will hurts. continue to stack those passive shards. His, that means his Q is going to do even more damage. All of his ability is going to get even larger. Zen's now looking for a counter gank onto the Pantheon. Pantheon decides not to go in. He sees Fenberg walking in. Everyone's scared of Fenberg now. They see him. Oh, good flash by him. A very necessary flash with that Aurelian Soul Ultimate coming down. That was instant doom. Yeah, yeah they're, they're going to look onto uh, Aurelian Soul here. If they get a pick on Aurelian Soul, that would be oh, large. A counter teleport charge. coming in from the Cougars. I smell bacon. Oh, that oh is, it's a collapse on all sides. We do have Fenberg here though. Maybe look for a turn or just an escape. I think that they just need to be out there. Oh, stepping up too, just far a up. Bit too far up. A there. late teleport. But they need to just focus on getting out. Uh, Malphite does not have his ultimate. They're just going to chase him down. And he's going to be the next victim. Sends out looking for a re engage onto the, onto the Ice Meal Bacon, but he's not going to. Oh, he gets a red buff. Wait, it wasn't even red buff. What? He the mystery nice. kill of uh, random. He stared at him Oops. angrily, and so he perished. That's okay. We'll take that. Uh, Finberg taking a fight right now from Power Beam. That that play started out as, as rather solid there for the Cougars, unfortunately, but kind of devolved into mass chaos on both sides. And uh, Faulkner was able to get a couple of cursory kills in return. Did lose quite a few, unfortunately. Uh, Malphite being uh, one that just wasn't really able to contribute to that team fight much and sort of died anyway. And they aren't even gonna contest the dragon. There's just no way of fighting that dragon. That really still is looking very beefy right now, very scary, and they need to lock him down. Uh, no. And he's honestly going to be the main issue. Him and the Silas are going to be very scary. That Kaisa is not going to deal with these damage as they are. And he'll be the main targets. But that Hecarim is going to get on the back of so easily. And we have so many people in the back line. It's going to be the way Varus and Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia is not dealing as much damage right now. Uh, because she's just so behind the gold. But we can see a fight happening right now. Cassiopeia. Solid. Mars goes down mid lane. Finberg fighting for his life in the top side. He's gonna get Silas, but they are gonna lose the trade mid lane. Yeah. And it's it's looking. Rough. And you were talking about just how easy it is for uh, Southern Illinois to get onto the back line of Faulkner here. It is the Cloud Soul, which gives bonus move speed on ultimate activation. It means that anytime there's any sort of engage here, all of their whole dive comp already is going to be able to move that much faster towards our back line with the the Hecromol in their jungle. Silas, whoever he chooses, it doesn't matter. It's just a load of engage ultimates outside of way. Uh, obviously, Pantheon, direct backline access. Kaisa, direct backline access. The only one who can't make great use of it is Aurelian Soul, and even then, Hit still has its purposes. So, it's really dangerous. I, I smeal bacon here on the Aurelian Soul in the middle lane. Very consistent farm, lots of gold. Already three items, three rather expensive items. I mean, just look at that, that minion. That 0 and 9 Cassiopeia is hurting right now, uh, but the honestly kind of keeping up in, in items, two items to three right now, uh, because Cassiopeia does not need to buy boots. Uh, but 
I, I don't know. It's, it's looking dangerous. Monica needs to get boots, honestly. Uh, but uh, far as old, you oh, to it will catch. Down, try to root down the heck room, but just not, not low enough. There. Oh. Going too far there. Just, just trying to Pretty chase greedy after. there. Just hoping for any sort of comeback factor here. And Cassie Pia is going to come straight into the Aurelian Soul combo. A giant Sky's Descend. Benberg trying to run through five right now. Not gonna be able to do it. Oh, oh Monica's too late. Uh, just, just wasn't there in time. That power beam is so low. It's so sad. But uh, they are gonna go take the Baron right now. Get another objective on the map. And they are a solid 10,000 kills ahead. Uh, it's gonna be about 12,000 Baron kills. And it's gonna be. Something positive here. Let's look at Hemberg and let's look at Varus. Both playmaking potential. Uh, Fenberg can get down, get on the Aurelian Soul in the back line, maybe get a good pick early in the fight, but that Aurelian Soul just has a lot of peel with the Pantheon and with the Silas there too. And Hecarim not even not even part of the problem because Hecarim is gonna be on our back line. So it's just, it's all we need to do right now is pick, get picks. And that's exactly what they're looking to do on Phantom. Excellent job on getting on the ward right there. Uh, oh, flash use, but they, they body blocked themselves. Oh, no. Oh, they oh. flash after it. Zombie gets the kill. Teleport, Teleport coming in. This is going to be risky. Silas, no. Fender trying to peel off his team. And, oh. Oh, Monica actually finding a great ult into their back line. Silas trying to go to work here. Uh, Aurelian Soul has arrived, and that's going to mean curtains for Faulkner. Yeah. Uh, Frisbee was not there for that fight. He was splitting a lot side, looking for a lot side tower, maybe. But no teleport means he wouldn't be yeah. able to join anyway. Southern Illinois, with all the numbers advantage there, yeah. uh, likely won't be able to do a ton outside of maybe grabbing an inhibitor here. I think we need to focus on engaging with the Malphite, not using it as a backline tool, like, like at the end of the fight. Uh, but we need to focus on staying together right now, staying group, because uh, even if one person is separate, from their team, that doesn't mean anything because they have the they have the they have the you can just be there in a second. It does not matter. And we so see, we, we have to stay together. We see in the middle lane, Bacon is two entire levels up on Frisbee Meniscus, and likely that's closer to two and a half. That is really bad news in the mid lane because that means he's about to hit his level 16. That ultimate is going to be devastating once he's collected all those all the necessary stacks. Yeah. It's going to be some brutalization happening here, and honestly, he's still got a lot, a lot of gold left in the pocket. And that will be the Cloud Soul going over to the Southern Illinois Cougars, and that this is looking a little rough right now. Pantheon chasing after the Varus, but I mean, Varus can't do much. No, he is completely uh, caught out here. Pantheon, Best he can hope for is just a little bit of the spar. It's going to be faster, but the teleport coming in for a little save against the Varus. Varus needs to be careful of the Ekrim right there. Yeah. Ekrim's going to just obliterate him, but the Malphite is not going to be able to get out of there. He's trapped. Just too greedy on for I'm Blue right there. You can't be stepping up that far as an AD carry. Very squishy. Frisbee Niscus might actually have enough damage to win this one out. Kaisa not having enough items. Only two items on two Whoa. items means it's a fair fight. And Frisbee Meniscus on the Cassiopeia <laughs> with the poison stacks is going to win out. What the? That should never work. A 1v2 when Cassiopeia is 0 and 10 is crazy. Excellent work by Frisbee. Great outplay. He's getting a little bit too greedy there. Oh, he almost won that one too. They're what respecting the poison damage. I mean, now with the, the fully stacked Scepter there and the fully stacked Archangels, this Cassiopeia, even though she might have 11 deaths, is still pretty strong. That is amazing, and honestly, I'm I'm very excited uh, by that because that means Cassiope is scaling up a little bit more. Uh, we need to focus more on funneling more gold into her. The 11 deaths hurts the 
the levels a lot, sure. But I mean, it's still doing a lot of damage if we can find a good Malphite ult on the back line, get a good poison uh, layout on, uh, on the front line. Uh, to stop them from rushing in on, on our back line, then maybe we could actually find a good fight and and turn around. This game has been a, a bit of a bloodbath here. 14 to 35 kills at 27 minutes is is uh, honestly pretty high up there. Don't see that too, too often in terms of these more organized games, but it just goes to show how much action there's been uh, across the field. No, I, I can... I, it's really strange, but I like it. I'm fight for another help. fight happening. Our soul goes wide, but every other ult is landing. Uh, Silas is scary. Hector goes back in. Oh, oh really? So with the skies descend, it's going to wipe everyone. Oh, that's a lot of really soul damage right there. Uh, Finberg looking for a way out, oh, but just not going to find Oh, my gosh. It. The damage really is so ludicrous. And that's going to be the game. They just need to walk down the minions from mid lane here. Maybe we'll see them go through top lane instead, but I don't see a whole lot of purpose to likely just head over and help out their jungler in the mid, and that'll be game number one going over to the Southern Illinois. Yeah, and there's just nothing that they can do right now for and there's no way to stop them either. And it's just, that's exactly what happens, is because it doesn't matter if one person's caught out, the Aurelian Soul can you know, make the, the Hector, and they can be there in a second. It doesn't matter how many you think you have there, they're always going to have more. So that, that was just scary. Uh, honestly, needed to save the Malphite ult for the Aurelian Soul, maybe. Maybe catch him Interrupt out. Interrupt his channel but a little bit. That's just so risky to do. That was a great Malphite ult in theory, mm -hmm. but the really soul just does so much more damage than anyone else on their team. We can't afford to focus anyone else on their team and survive. Yeah, it made things really difficult, honestly, early, just with the, the massive deficit that we suffered. It, uh, it kind of set the tone for the whole game, especially when you have these really strong scaling champions like the Aurelian Soul. Uh, honestly, Silas being pretty good at Almost every single stage of the game, once he gets his level 6 and once he gets that Hextech alternator, it just makes things uh, rather challenging to kind of come back from. And Faulkner just not able to, to win out this time. We'll look to see if they can change up their strategy a little bit here going into game 2. Honestly, wouldn't be surprised to see uh, another drastic shift like we saw last week where we do see Fember go up into the top lane, try to stifle that just a little. But only time will tell. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with game two. Many months later. Welcome back to Faulkner University stream of League of Legends. Uh, this is game number two out of three, hopefully, uh, if mm -hmm. League of Legends can pull out a win. I am expecting to see... A little bit more improvement on our Wi-Fi's part in the beginning of the game. Big detriment mm -hmm. to our team for sure. Yeah, no, that was that was hurtful. But we also need and by to... Wi-Fi, we do mean wired Ethernet. We're not we're not any bozos here playing on Wi-Fi. Uh, haven't ha I don't think we've ever competed on Wi-Fi. I think it's always been wired on. It, it's actually against the rules to play on Wi-Fi. Oh, well, it's even the better. Rules, right? Yeah, I can't believe you didn't know that. We. I mean, the difference is just astronomical between the capabilities of Wi-Fi and, and Ethernet, which makes it a little bit more concerning that we were having issues last time just because it's so much more reliable. It means that it wasn't sort of some sort of interference. It means it was something something bigger. But thankfully, it all got worked out. Unfortunately, Faulkner still ended up losing the game. But hopefully this time we can kind of go into it with a little bit more pep in our step. Uh, won't struggle quite as much to to get our feet on the ground and get the ball rolling because i feel like that was a big part of why we lost the last game yep a uh, great thing about league is that every new game everyone starts same level again the bleeding does not exist mm -hmm. snowballing gone power Before gone e items gone so everything's back on equal terms again and i think we have a much better shot in this game now 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 that we have our computers fixed up Rearing to go and hopefully good attitudes. And yeah, that's I, important. I think that, like, they need to just shake off the last game like it didn't happen. Uh, but in the future, we do need to learn how to just stop the bleeding. We need to learn how to just play safe. We, like you said, we need to learn how to freeze the wave in front of our turret so that we don't get hurt by stepping up for minions more. And that gives them more gold, gives us less experience and gold, and gets them further ahead in the game. And that's what we need to focus on. Uh, that's what we're going to try to do in this game. 
so it looks like they are just about ready to start up the game, but that means that we're going to have to be like three minutes behind them. Yeah, we still um, got a penalty. Still got a wait. Yeah, it's okay. We're looking at our fearless leader, Charlie, lieutenant in the middle, Isaac. We call him Cool Man. And, oh. Yeah, started that today and right now, in fact. <laughs> And Congratulations on your new nickname. Yeah. And Josh in the far right corner saying thank you, brother, I'm sure. And uh they they honestly look like they're they're feeling good. They that's that's always a good thing uh to to hear. Uh because especially after a loss, it's very difficult to have a, a good mindset again. But they seem to have no problem with it. That's awesome. Uh good mentalities win games. Uh, not giving up, very important. And it was great seeing that Faulkner was still fighting back, even with such a detrimental gold loss. They were still mm -hmm. saying, okay, what can we do to try to make a difference here? What can we, what, what kills can we look for to try to do something different in this game so that we can uh, find an opportunity and take advantage of it? And I think that that's honestly revolving a lot around Moniker's ult and Finberg's engage. They found so many kills onto that Silas because... Finberg said, okay, that Silas is feeling way too cocky right now. He's stepping up. We can catch him out. Malphite ult, Zenzhou knock up, Zenzhou slow, Malphite slow. He should be dead. Mm. And it happened. It's a wonderful thing to see because that's true teamwork right there. That is awesome. And that's what we need to see more of. Uh, I'm hoping to see maybe, um, I don't know the characters yet, but maybe like something on uh, early game again for Isaac and maybe something uh, more late game for everyone else so that Isaac can carry the team through that early game where people tend to struggle more and so that they can get uh, maybe some more experience in the mid, mid lane so that Charlie can do what he enjoys and scale the crap out of everything because Charlie, I don't know how, 0 and 10, 1 V2s, that, that was insane. That was amazing. Uh, and I want to see it again, but him not be zero. Ten. Yes, that would be ideal. Maybe yeah. getting a couple kills ahead. Yep. Uh, and so we need to focus on snowballing a gold lead that we get. Uh, maybe looking for an invader too. Uh, the small things really do matter, especially early game. So if we even get one wave taken away from uh, our, our opponent, that is gold lead for us and that is experience for us. And that's what we need to focus on. Then we say, okay, I'm a level above you. I should win this trade and I should do this instead of, you know, it's just give and take. It's mm -hmm. all a game of give and take. So uh, what are your thoughts about last game? It was rough. Yeah. It was rough. I mean, just every every single area struggled. I know the bot lane wasn't explicitly behind, but they weren't in any sort of position to do anything. They generally did not have lane priority, which meant that a lot of the bottom side objectives generally went over to Southern Illinois. Mm. And it, it just made... Like, there wasn't really a, a shining spot in the early game. It really was about Faulkner trying to claw their way back. But ultimately, it was too late. Uh, but now we're just about to load in to game two. Let's see what Faulkner has in store for us. Hopefully. Oh. All right. We, we see. have switched around in terms of champion pool for our support. We have a Blitzcrank. Honestly, not something I was expecting in the slightest. Blitzcrank, uh, a potentially game-changing character, but uh, especially for people who are newer, it all revolves around one spell, and and that one spell has like a, a very high mana cost and a very long cooldown. So if you miss that, you essentially have a quarter of a champion. And we also see I'm blue on Sivir uh, instead of his usual Caitlyn pick or... Uh, something else like that they're looking very aggressive they're looking at at zumbi to try to uh get an early pick onto that janna uh they're gonna see him on the ward there uh they're still looking to invade this this is this is ballsy uh i don't know if i can say that on Falcon. but bold bold very bold uh that mordekaiser oriana and volo bear combo is gonna go up top lane and Honestly, I like our team comp a lot. I, I I think this is some some interesting composition. Uh, we have some 
we have some uh, peel for our Sivir with the Blitzcrank and the Nivea sitting in the back line. They do not have a Silas. I'm sure we banned it from last game. You know, frankly, the, the bottom lane duo is a little bit interesting here. Typically, all that, that you'll see Sivers want to do is just kind of farm up and and scale into their items a little bit. And Blitzcrank really wants to make early plays. And I don't know if Sivir has the sustained damage to do that. Uh, Moniker trying to do something similar to what Southern Illinois did last game, but they have a 2v1. Yep. Their Mordekaiser notice moved down. And uh, Ooh, good stun oh, on the Oriana. Good, good That's move mid. first blood for Faulkner right there. Good pick right there. That's what I'm talking about. There we That's go. That's good rotation by Lee Sen. He, he knows that Volver is on his blue buff. He knows that he's taking it slowly because Moniker gave him the pressure there. And so he's looking for an early pick. Oh, oh does he steal the red buff? Does he, does he still oh, the Bull Bear focusing entirely on the red buff. Oh my gosh. And Vinberg's just going to punish him. doesn't even get to kill the red buff. What is he doing? Vinberg my man him. fell asleep. He, he, he wanted that red buff very bad, but he just didn't have the damage to finish it off. And Moniker is taking a bad fight in the top side oh, because yeah. of that because of that level two advantage, because he did give away some pressure, some experience in the early game. And so he needs to play really, really safe right now. Zoom be looking for an angle to get a pull. It does look, this is a level two blitz crank. That, yep. That's kind of the big power spike here. Uh, unfortunately looking. taking a lot of unnecessary poke to try to look for that hook angle. Yep. Ooh, that's a lot of damage onto that bliss crank. Oh, Moniker, very low. But you gotta, you gotta leave. Uh, oh. I saw him coming. I'm not gonna lie. I was about to be like, yep. don't flush Q. But oh. it's okay. Uh, that that's gonna be ooh, another trade in the mid lane. We I like holds it. his Q, and that's another kill for Faulkner. Excellent. Yep. Going Gold flash going for into, flash. Ooh, Gold going into the mid lane. Zumbi getting a hook onto, onto the hook. Jinx. That is excellent. Oh, exhaust. Every single zombie. summoner is being burned. Ignite on Jinx. Barrier used on Jinx. Silver is running for a kill because of the ghost on blue. Do they look for more? Do they look? They should. Flash Terrible target do. management from Southern Illinois. And Faulkner takes advantage of it. Oh, Flash from Bull no, Bear no. will be enough to seal the deal. Oh, no. Zuby sacrifices. Zuby sacrifices. And Silver makes it out alive. Oh, wow. what a team play. Honestly. Benberg there for the counter gank. Beautiful teamwork. Yep, beautiful reversal there from Faulkner punish the, the atrocious mispositioning there of Southern Illinois. Jinx, Jana is not going to be doing a ton of work here in this early game. Really just sort of playing it safe and scaling back and that Jana is there to prevent that Jinx from dying. They don't need to be chasing a ton of these fights and, and they're going to pay the price. Sivir had more uh, resources than this Jinx did and every summoner basically except for a couple of support flashes is going to be blown. Faulkner comes out the better of it. It's five kills to two for Faulkner. Moniker needs to be careful here. That wave is pushing towards him, so he can just be patient and wait for the CS to come yeah. to him. But uh, he still does need to be patient uh, for what he goes in on. It is a very scary <coughs> Mordekaiser that he's fighting into right now. And this is a very, very good start for Faulkner. Uh, Lee Sen being a central part to this because of how often he's just moving around the map, taking everything, killing the little bear early. Oh, that's another good hook wow. onto the Jinx by Zumi. And that's probably gonna be it. The Jana Tornado was 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 out. That's an excellent Oh, trade stepping up Faulkner. a little bit far into these minions. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of minion aggro, a lot of minion damage, and uh, Faulkner actually kind of loses that trade because of it, but overall it's not terrible. Uh, that is excellent damage onto the Jana, onto the Jinx. Lee Sin there already. Excellent hook again. They can't avoid it. Zoomies oh, be going careful. Crazy. Oh, a little bit of a silly flash, but that's okay. You know what? These hooks have been pretty consistently yeah, landing that's here. That's awesome. Congratulations. That's no. that's exactly what you needed to see from this Blitzcrank pick. You couldn't really afford to sort of sit back and play passively like we've seen from, from the support in the past. I want to see Zombie on more hook characters now. She's landing them like crazy. Like yeah. they are just not avoiding them at all. Like, and you know, I appreciate it because that gives them just a little bit more agency both in the lane and in the roam times, you know? This it gives Faulkner a little bit more playmaking potential outside of the jungle exclusive pressure. This is the first time that we've seen our bot lane ahead in gold early game. This is one of the very first times, and it's because of this aggressive pick. It's not something that we usually see that is more of a stand behind the ADC, do damage type thing. 
because that's just very risky to our own ADC and it's just very scary to uh, thing to, to do like that and so they're going to be looking at Void Goat right now but I just want to say excellent work on the Blitzcrank zombie coming out to be a star right now. Uh, Lee Sin is going to look at the Void Grubs a little bit too late. Um, Mordekaiser finishes off the Void Grubs. Lee Sin looking to pick up anything that might be there. But this is dangerous. Oh, Lee Sin hops out really easily. Uh, and he needs to look uh, at the dragon. Make sure they aren't going to get the double objective there. Uh, because this is a very, very close game still. Did, Gold League, very close. Did Moniker not level up his ultimate? Uh, I don't think he did. Maybe not. I think uh, he leveled up something else, so he is going to have to wait till 7. The enemy team doesn't know that. The enemy team doesn't know that. And so, uh, Lee Sin just gets his ultimate right there. Uh, and he's going to look for something in the mid lane, probably. Uh, he's, they're actually going to look towards the dragon right now. They have priority in the bot lane because of that early pressure power that Sivir has. Uh, easy to push the waves with. And they're, they're going to go after this dragon. Uh, they see the bull bear on his blue buff right now. Uh, they don't really care. They have priority mid lane. They have priority bot lane. They say, come, come contest it if you want. They, we, try, try. It. Moniker's standing right there, right next to the, right next to uh, Mordekaiser. Very bold of him as well. Uh, good trade by Moniker. Gets out the Q. We get the dragon. Excellent job trading objectives there. Uh, way to way to recognize that we have the pressure in mid and bot lane to do so. The first uh, hook missed by zombie, but still follows up with oh the kick just the layered a little bit CC late. into the choke point right there. Just gonna be a little bit too much for Faulkner to to comb through. Are looking for a follow up here. Very aggressive positioning. The the kick gonna come out from Lee Sin. Lee Sin gets uh, server gets the pick. Gets a dying hook onto the jinx, onto the jinx, but the Sivir's still trying to fight it. Oh, this bull bear is so low. What? What is he doing? Stays in there. Or he, oh, he was waiting shock for wave is gonna find oh. both. Big and shutdown going now. over to Bacon. Jinx rocket used, expended, but that is just a dead, oh. dead Sivir right there. That is. That is a lot of shutdown gold going over to this Oriana. And I'm blue had uh, flash. I'm not sure why he didn't flash there. I'm not sure uh, what the reason was, but uh, I think he could have made it out. Maybe he didn't think so. And just didn't want to waste the summer spell. Uh, that Mordekaiser is looking pretty tanky. Even though he just has one kill, he has 30 CS lead on our Malphite right there. And a lot of gold from that tower right now. This is uh, a very even game. Faulkner still has the very slight lead right now. They need to do everything they can to maximize that lead. Look for more picks. Look for more and more uh, opportunities that they can uh, drive on. And for right now, that is just CSing. Uh, staying safe, then waiting for the right moment to go after the Void Grubs next, or go after the next dragon, and stay on top of the objectives. The objectives give the most gold in the game, and so that's what they need to prioritize. Over kills, over fights, and over possible losses in those fights. They need to focus those objectives. Now Faulkner had a, a pretty substantial gold lead early on, and we see now it's dissipated just a few hundred gold. Oh, they're looking for an engage. Uh, Bull Bear's not in sight, but they're just looking for a tussle right now. Uh, Trading zombie, before the Lee Sin gets there is a little bit questionable. Ooh, zombie couldn't really do much there after the after the Q gets used, but Lee Sin and Anivia are moving down. However, they miss the skill shots they need to hit. Bull Bear is moving down as well. No one is looking at these boys right now, but they. But Faulkner loves going after this tower. Oh, they get an excellent hook hook. on the Jinx. Max range. Uh, Leeson tries to go in. Jinx, or Jana, pushes him away. Uh, tornado knocks him up. But Flash, used by the Bullet Bear, gets a kill onto the Blitzcrank. Leeson kills the kills the Jana. Leeson looking for more, and he gets oh. it. But at the Will cost get of the middle light, Monica tower. going down as well. Great. Oh, it's a bloodbath all over the map. And it's still such a close game, but they're going to demolish this top side or this bottom side turret. Moniker is going to be able to teleport back. I don't think he'll need to though. He'll just be he can just walk with the wave. But he might look to might look to kill maybe by teleporting to a mini. That's a very low Mordekaiser right there. Uh, mini, mini teleport isn't available yet. No. Nope. Oh, nope. it is. It yeah, is. It yes. Is. But he he's I don't think he's going to be able to be fast. Oh oh, that's Nivia going in for that uh. one. 
Means Oriana's just farming. Oh, up that's an excellent wall by Nivia. Can he hit the skill shots? Oh, not enough. Not enough. Oh, so close. Oh, almost. Very close. But that means that Oriana gets amazing pressure in the mid lane, and Nivia loses uh, a lot of CS in, in the mid lane as well. Uh, Oriana seems to be back in right now instead of uh, trying to help the bull there on the void grubs, which is fine for us. Uh, Volver actually almost stole that. Very cool. I life. thought he did for a I, second. Yeah, I was, I was about to be very impressed. Uh, but not so, not so. Blue team slays the Void Grubs. And we are tied in the Void Grubs. And we have a dragon on our side. We have a uh, 300-ish gold lead uh, right now. So it's still looking pretty good for Faulkner. Um, but they just need to focus on scaling. Sivir is going to scale like crazy, but so is that Jinx. So is that Oriana. And uh, they just need to be careful with the Mordekaiser ult. They need to be careful with the Polar Bear and uh, Oriana engage. Excellent hook onto the Jinx right there. Barrier exhaust used. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Oh, but they get the kill once uh, once right about side. Finberg trying to come in and save Moniker. Maybe kick away. Oh, kick into the tower. Uh, Mordekaiser Olsen. He's going to get extra damage. And he's going to be ghosted as well. Finberg holding his own. I'm blue running away. Uh, Finberg makes it out of the fight alive. I'm blue. Can't I can't even believe same. that neither our jungler nor their top laner died. Yeah, no, both very low right now. Oh, very risky by the least said. But he jumps in there and gets it, gets the shutdown gold on the Mordekaiser. And Lee Sin is looking very tanky right now. He's looking very dangerous. And uh, that's a lot of kill position. However, they are going to trade topside uh, kill for the dragon right now. And that is, I mean, that's a very trade. I'm not going to lie. We had to shut down gold onto the Mordekaiser. We gave up the dragon. But we can contest the next one when we have more pressure. In we the got we got dragon number one too. So giving them that first dragon isn't nearly as detrimental as, right. as say if they already had the first one. No, I, I completely agree. And that was, that was just a very scary fight though. That, was, that had my blood pressure going up. But uh, that that Anivia versus Oriana is they're they're both just going to clear the wave so quickly and be able to rotate so easily. Uh, but they need to look towards bottom uh, right now because that's where everyone is. Lee Sin going in with the blue uh, screen. Hook going to go left. Goes wide. Uh, oh, going this, is, in still. this is dangerous right here. Oh, that CC is locked up. Sivir was on the side. Zombie, si oh, almost sidesteps it, but stays alive. Um, Lee Sin has the Q onto the Ajana, but does not go in very smart. Uh, and Lee Sin goes in on the Jinx. Flash used, barrier used uh, in the last fight. Uh, he goes, he's gonna look to go back in again. Because oh, pushed out. the John Ultimate gonna oh, shove him away. Oh, can get out? That's the name of the game. No. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh. Polar Bear back for revenge, just Faulkner overstepping a little yep. bit, got a little bit too confident there. Health bars weren't high enough. Polar Bear gonna find a reversal. What a close game right now. The top laner is currently taking the Rift Herald. Uh, if Anivia realizes this, she could move, but she's just gonna yeah, attack the turret. They're gonna see Polar Bear in the mid lane and not worry about it. Uh, so that, that Rift Herald is probably gonna go over to the Cougars. Uh, Anivia's oh, actually running towards taking a dangerous path the jungle. Number of the missing. But, that that rift tail goes over to them. Uh, and then gets out, and uh, that is a dangerous looking world has right now. Uh, especially with that gold lead that he has in the top side. Uh, our Malphite does not have boots yet, and that's going to be very, very scary going into this fight uh, that is bound to happen because that, that wave is going to be pushing towards Malphite. Uh, hopefully, Zombie makes another good pick onto the Jinx or Janna. Both of them suffering very much right now. One in 10 bot lane. Very impressive from the side of Faulkner. And uh, we'll see how this game goes. It's, it's honestly anyone's game at this point because of the, the gold. The gold is just so even right now. They're looking for a pick. Uh, I wonder if they'll find it. I uh, doubt it. Uh, the teleport coming right in front of the Mordekaiser's face and yep. not really a lot of threat to follow it up there. Uh, but they are looking for a counter engage right now. The Mordekaiser gets knocked up by the mouth fight. Uh, Anivia is going to have to run for the hills. Uh, flash used by the bull bear, flash used by the Anivia, and that mouth fight is just going to be dead. 
Uh, that is a good counter gank uh, by the enemy team. Oh, Blitzcrank gets another good hook. Finds the angle, is trapped under tower. And the Jonic it. healing gonna sustain for a little while. Oh, the static shiv kills the Jonic. I'm blue once more. Oh, he doesn't sidestep the Jinx ult just short. That Jinx ult is actually very tricky because with that specific rocket for that skin, it makes it seem so much smaller than it actually is. So you think, oh, I'm safe here. Oh, I, I don't need to go any further. When in fact, you are going to be Oh, first. excellent charge. That was great. That's actually not true for those of you who are confused. <laughs> that, is the opposite that was a terrible charge. Yeah. Straight <laughs> yeah. to the wall did absolutely nothing. Uh, but they still do get the turret. Um, and they're... Oh. oh. I think that was just a, a fat finger. I think that was just a Had to be right there. Uh, a little bit unfortunate. Um, but we are going to see that Rift Hero go bye-bye. And we're going to look for the next objective. That's what we need to do. The Infernal Dragon spawns in a minute. We need to start setting our vision now. Start setting our vision in their tri-bush on their side of the map, as well as our own side. Uh, just, just to make sure that we are not going to get any surprises any any hits out of left field uh but they're taking out our control ward that's a risky play by i'm blue that's that's very wide shot uh he's he's gonna ult out of there but that's one ult that they won't have for the objective fight in a minute uh ghost used lots of summoners blue. used too oh, Mordecai, and he's just gonna, gonna kill full send it turret. Polar Bear is going to go in as well, and that Mordekaiser is looking scary with that with that Rylai's. Once he gets onto you with his that, he has ghost, yep. once he gets onto you, you're just going to be dead. Yep, it's, with that constant magnetic field circling around him, it's it's curtains for you. If you get caught and you don't have any sort of additional movement abilities, yep, no. Uh, it's, it's looking a little rough now, uh, but still not impossible. Only a 2,000 gold lead towards uh, southern, southern Illinois. And uh, we are going to give up the dragon. Um, Malphite is looking to take top turret, but he, ooh, he's going back in oh, on the Ember. Lee Sin's there to catch up with him. Oriana used flash right there. Lee Sin oh, for the secure. And that is all we needed from the pick in the top side because that is. That Lee Sin is just never going to be able to uh, outsmite that Volo Bear when he has his entire team around him. Finberg knew that. He said, okay, what can we look for in trade for that? Because they have complete power over the dragon. What can we see? What can we do? And they focus top side. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. What is it all about what you give and what you take? Faulkner got a little bit less out of that trade, but that's as much as they could have gotten. Uh, me looking for a hook right now goes wide. Um, they're looking to get onto this Jinx Jana combo. Jana already used ultimate, barrier used, uh, and Lee Sin is happy with that trade. Yeah, Jana no, no Lee Sin ultimate means relatively low instant burst pressure there. Uh, just enough from his basic 1-2, and, uh, and claiming a barrier there is pretty solid, as well as chunking her out a little bit, maybe setting up for potential gank here in, uh, in the mid lane. However, Bola Bear showing up. Kill on any hopes of that. Yep, no, it's it's always rough uh, when you don't have an ultimate going into a fight, but even just his pressure, he's nine and two. He's gonna do some With a pretty anyways. significant uh, minion lead as well. Yeah, absolutely. We see 40 CS lead here for him in the jungle. Yeah, uh, it's, it's definitely gonna be a tough hill to climb, but not impossible with this Lee Sin. If he gets a pick onto, say, their Oriana early before the fight starts, and then he goes on to their Jinx and Janna, then I think we have a solid chance of winning the fight. Uh, we, we have a strong Sivir and the Anivia who's just gonna keep scaling, uh, but we do need to be cautious of that Mordekaiser. If that Mordekaiser starts ulting our Sivir, that's gonna be really terrible for us because Sivir thrives on group fights, not one-on-ones. And so if it's a one-on-one -on -one versus the Mordekaiser, it's more than likely gonna go there, especially because of how beefy that Mordekaiser is. And we're looking right now, uh, we are not going to see very many tussles before the Baron fight, I'm guessing, other than maybe trying for an early pick. They're going to go try to set up vision right now, but that Malphite is going to look hot out right now. Uh, Malphite going to need to ult out of there. Uh, Frisbee trying to do some damage. Oriana ult used, uh, and Malphite ult used as well onto Moniker, taking him out of fight. Uh, Mal uh, is going to look, but they get a return kill onto the Oriana. Uh, 
that Mordecai is going to go he down. He is Surely. He yeah, is done. He's, done. <laughs> he's done for excellent work uh, on the return kills. That is a two for two trade. And actually picked one up on the backside as well. Oriana going to yep. fall means that it does go even for Faulkner. Yep, and honestly, that's that's not terrible. Jinx is pushing in the bot side. They're going to get vision on the Baron. That's good. They get uh, top pushed out. They get mid pushed out. And uh, bot's going to suffer minor damage. But uh, if, they're not, if they're not going to push it, then that's not going to be... That's not going to be a whole lot of damage from the minions right there. Uh, it looks like they are, in fact, going to push, but it's going to be a late push. So our Sivir's going to be there and uh, going to be able to clear the wave really easily. Um, and they're going to need to back off now. But uh, that that's pretty good for us. This yeah. is giving me good hope right now. A little bit of a misstep yeah. there from them. Kind of ruined a lot of their tempo that they had, but we'll take that every day. Oh, that Navy is looking a little rough right now. Uh, throws his stun out a little bit too soon, but good wall. And he's oh my god! Play in his ult. He's just taking a stroll. That is an excellent. Didn't want to expend the ultimate, and it's gonna cost him. Yeah, Faulkner brings everyone back for that kill. They're not letting that bull bear get away. That is excellent. Yeah. Shut Honestly, down gold. that's fine. I don't think that Southern Illinois has a lot of Baron pressure here. It's okay for them to send all five. They don't need everyone. Yeah, no. Uh, but like, <laughs> that was that was a lot of people. Um, and I'm sure it was very scary for that bull bear. Another misstep by Southern Illinois, and that means that we can now look for the Baron buff. Uh, Oriana does have TP, so she can teleport at any time to the Baron buff. They, we don't care. We're going to start anyway. Uh, they won't have a jungle for another five seconds, uh, and then that jungle is going to have to follow and run over here. But we got to be careful of Mordekaiser ults onto the Lee Sin, taking him out of the fight. Uh, Lee Sin looking for a pick onto the John. Good hook by Zombie. Uh, Mordekaiser is ulting the Lee Sin right now. Flash goes to oh, by very Mordekaiser. Oh, nice. Finberg makes it out. Uh, flashes. Oh, there. That was excellent footwork by Lee Sin. Yep. Way to go. Did buy them enough time to get the Volibear Bear back over, but it's going to cost them too. Yep. Uh, but uh, that Volibear Bear is still going to look to steal. I think we're going to look to fight this uh, instead oh, of taking the bear. I'm blue is going to go down due to the Oriana Jinx rocket used is not available for the steal, but now we are too low to do the Baron and we have to look for the dragon instead. With no red buff here, it means that the, the life steal is going to be relatively low. Uh, Fenberg not going to have a whole lot of health at his disposal, but his ultimate will be back up more than likely in time for whatever fight breaks out. Yep, and uh, they just were not looking to 50-50 that uh, Baron buff. They will, however, take this probably in enough time before this. Oh, can it doesn't down. look like that will even contest. Yeah, no, and uh, that is two dragons to two dragons. Overall, really good play by Faulkner, making the gold lead even again and even in our favor just a smidge. And that's that's what we need to look for uh, in every fight. That, that's what we need to do. And the great thing fight. is that our damage isn't locked into one character. You know, it's pretty decently spread between the Lee Sin and the Sivir here for I'm Blue. And the uh, Frisbee Meniscus Anivia also is just there as a, as a constant threat, this constant dot uh, of the storm that you have to be on the lookout for because if you don't respect it, her E double damage will kill you. Yeah, and uh, like this is excellent playing by Faulkner. And they're finally saying, okay, what, what have we done wrong? What can we do better? And how is this going to uh, affect the next play? Because they weren't just locked in on the Baron. They said, okay, what could be better here? Moniker still does not have boots. Oh, brother, you got to be moving around. You're I mean, getting your stone feet all nasty. Yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's got to get boots so he, he doesn't need to ult out every time he gets caught like that. Because he, if he had boots there, he could just waddle away. And frankly, something like the Mercurial Tread, something to reduce the, the massive amount of CC or even uh, a Swifties here. If you want to go the conservative route, just go anti-slow and let him walk wherever he wants to. Just that as long as he gets something. Is looking in trouble right now. Oriana just gonna burst him down so quickly. Uh, the ultimate is used by Oriana, but they're gonna look barren or at least look to fight here uh, because that Oriana killed the killed our main carry. That that is uh, really bad because the Sivir is our main source of damage here. 
and we need to <laughs> we need to just give up the Baron buff because we are not going to win a fight here. It looks like Malphite and Blitzcrank are going to be there, trying to find a pick on the backside, trying to get something in return. Uh, Mordekaiser is probably not going to allow that. Uh, he's coming in, but it's going to be too late. Let's see if Walker can pick anything up on the backside. Hit, but he's probably just going to ult. Uh, get. Moniker oh, gets Moniker pulled in. Caught out. Oh, Blitzcrank gets pulled, but he pulls the wrong person. They're gonna flash. Zombie stops walking on accident, or maybe just. I think she was at the edge of the death realm. Oh, oh, gotcha. Okay. Uh, I'm blue. It's finally back in the fight, but is it too late? It looks like they won't be able to clean up anything other than other than taking off a few damage. But Lee Sin going for a kick onto the Mordekaiser. Oh, oh man, my the gosh! This is gonna be enough. They group up and just let the Sivir W them uh, because they're nice like that. Very and kind. They said, "Okay, guys, we hurt you. You can hurt us. It's all right." Uh, they, wow. That, I mean, you know what? I'm glad that happened. Uh, let's let's see it happen again. But they're feeling uh, a little too confident right now on the Sivir. Uh, that that's a very scary team that can just jump on you at any time, uh, especially with that Oriana ult uh, doing so much damage. He could die to just Oriana Q and ult right now. But uh, he has his, he has his blitz crank with him. So maybe that's why he's feeling a little bit more confident, but he needs to get out. The good news is that there's no immediate dash, no immediate source to transport this orb other than Oriana carrying it herself. Uh, normally with Oriana, you will see combinations with a, a big fast dash. And the best thing that you have is a Volibear ultimate that goes kind of fast, I guess, but it doesn't go terribly far. And he has a bit of a move speed buff. But for the most part, it's not going to be any sort of surprise. You're going to know when that's coming, and Faulkner can use that to their advantage. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That's a good point. Uh, usually it's paired with maybe a Malphite ult, but, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe a Lee Sin uh, going in quickly. Uh, but We've seen recently a lot of Nocturne as well. Oh, yeah. That's not gonna... not going to find a lot here in the top lane. That Mordekaiser has plenty of shielding with those Baron Empowered minions. Mordekaiser actually ulting the ulting Finberg kick used by Finberg just to get him away. Uh, Finberg's not going to win that one v one. Another tuffle is happening in the mid lane right now, but I think the other team's just distracting for the Oriana in the in the bot side. Uh, Mordekaiser doesn't care about taking damage. He's gonna he's gonna heal it up in a second anyways. Uh, three mid right now just to test the other three. Oh, but two Walker in the top spread side. a little bit too thin here with this Baron buff and just can't really hold any lane in particular. That Malphite is just, just doesn't have the wave clear to deal with the Baron powered Mordekaiser man. And so they need to group up, uh, but they they really just can't do much. Finberg or Frisbee gonna go into egg form and gonna get decimated as well. Uh, Mordekaiser chasing after I'm Blue, flashing, using everything. He goes way oh. too far. I'm Blue gets out. Excellent maneuver, and he is going to he's gonna turn the tides on it. That They're was gonna look to try to drag in here, but I think that the Mordekaiser might have thrown that play away. For yeah. Him. No, I completely agree. I don't think that Faulkner would even contest this dragon if Mordekaiser was still there. But Mordekaiser going in like that means that Faulkner now has a chance. It's a 4v4. They are going to get this dragon, uh, and it looks like they're just going to get out. But Finberg looking for more. He looks for a Q onto the Oriana. He goes in. Flash Q, flash kick onto the Jana. Jana dies. That's an excellent ult. Oh, Oriana gets one back. Uh, that's a Blitzcrank. Lee Sin and Malphite ult used in that fight. I think they lost her orb in the midst of the chaos there. It's easy to do, especially on that skin. It just It's nothing really in particular. It's just a bright white ball. And uh, with all the hustle and bustle of League animations, it, it can get lost. And Faulkner going to pay the price there. I'm blue going to fall. There, there is still hope, honestly, though, because oh yeah, uh, there's there's a lot of misplays from the side of Southern Illinois, and there's just there's a lot of opportunities that we can take advantage of, and opportunities that we have taken advantage of, and so I I really I really think that we, we can do it again. And yeah, I mean there there's a gold lead for them, but it doesn't feel like it really. 
No. It, it hasn't been nearly as strangling as last game was. Uh, it's sort of reminiscent, honestly, of, of last week where it feels like any one fight is, is going to determine the, the next big thing in the game. And in this case, that's going to be the Baron. Yep. No, that, that Baron fight will be necessary. We're going to need everyone there or everyone or at least someone with teleport to be on the other side of the map so that we uh, we have that potential to teleport in for a pick, maybe for a fight, but we need to just be mindful of that uh, Oriana, of that uh, Mordekaiser, who can ult away Lee Sin from the fight, because without our Lee Sin, we really are just gonna, we're, we're gonna come mm -hmm. And that Lee Sin playmaking ability, that zombie playmaking ability to hook the Jana, to hook the Jinx, that needs to happen in order for us to, to win. Like, uh, Lee Sin with the Guardian Angel, allowing him to go in without fear of, okay, if I go in, I might just get bursted down. No, he's not only tanking, he's also got the Guardian Angel so that he does not die on the first go round. He's playing very smart, buying good items, and uh, they. It, it's looking like a very close game. Our mid, our mid lane is. This is the perfect opportunity for for Faulkner is to back off right here, establish a vision in the top side, and yep. move towards that Baron. Clear yep. out some of Southern they Illinois' him, vision. They see him on a ward there, uh, and and so uh, that Anivia is just going to deal with the wave in the bot side. Anivia has teleport for a fight. Not going to let Mordekaiser get close. Sybil was used. Yeah. Sybil was used on the top side. Yeah, they're chasing down the Oriana uh, Volibear right now. <laughs> this Mordekaiser, he can't move. Oh, that's a lot of damage from the Oriana. That's oh, a flash used by the Flashing in. Oh, sidestep by the uh, Oriana. Flash used by Oriana. I don't think she gets out here. I think no, it's she's, she's strong and inevitable yeah. here. And actually, that works to, to our benefit because yep. that's going to give our our Sivir I'm Blue a little bit of time to thin out the wave in mid, reset, gather some health, and get ready for this Baron. No, I absolutely agree. I think it's I think it's very good. Uh, the Oriana, the Oriana Flash, the Oriana Ult, both gone on a 40 second timer. Baron is up right now. They need to push the wave so that they can actually take the Baron without the other team taking one of our inhibitor towers, and that's what we need to look for. Now. And we need to look for our next fight, our next pick. And that's exactly what they're doing right now. They're staying grouped up. We are the death ball this game. We need to stay grouped up like, like we have been and keep doing exactly what we're but doing But preferably, right now. watch out for that Oriana because if we if we death ball too hard and aren't aware of her, she will blow up our whole team. Right. No, I completely agree. And same with the Jinx. Jinx is getting strong too. Jinx scales as well. Jinx is staying in the game because of that CS. Uh, however, oh, that is a TP going into the Baron. Are they going? To, are they going to just? I don't like right that now? teleport with Lee Sin in the mid lane showing here. There's no reason for him not to just walk there. Yep. Uh, Lee Sin pressuring a ward, but not hopping to it after seeing the little bear Jana right there. Uh, very smart. Anivia is still pushing bottom side. Uh, Anivia is still with the t teleport. Uh, you know what? If she can draw Mordekaiser over there, yeah. that's perfect. Uh, Mordekaiser. Uh, looking to go deal with it but honestly dragon, dragon is coming up to yeah. 30 seconds here oriana is moving bot first uh it seems like they don't really know what to do uh falkner has top lane pushing and it's gonna have bot bot lane priority and mid lane priority um oh anivia flashes out uh very good flash gets out of a tight situation but we need to be more mindful of that in the future because this is looking scary. You need to this look for a pick right here. They have fight. the Blitzcrank. Oh, the Mordekaiser. A big Oriana is going to find three. It's not going to oh, matter. Health bars are just getting demolished on both sides. That That is a tanky, tanky Mordekaiser right there. Oh. And maybe an egg gets used, but no one on the team of the Cougars goes down. Lee Sin trying to escape right now. Maybe looking for a pick on the backside. Uh, looking for a Q on to the Oriana. Oh. Oriana uses the Zanyas. The GA is popped. Lee Sin's going to go down because of the root, and he's, it's just going to be a And that could lead fight. into a Baron for them as well. It, it doesn't look like they know what they want to do. They, they should just go Baron here. Sivir's going to be up in 20 seconds anyway. They, they wouldn't get a ton by shoving down mid right now. Just go get the Baron. Yep, they're going Baron right now. Uh, Jinx is going to shred that pretty easily, uh, especially with the Mordekaiser there tanking it for the Bear tanking it for. She should not go down. 
ultimately, I, I think that Faulkner had a great angle there. They had all the setups that they needed, but pulled in a bad target with that yeah. blitz crank. They just they brought the front line to themselves, and that led Southern Illinois get that massive Oriana ultimate that just shifted everybody's positioning in the fight and dealt out tons of damage. Yep, no. They really need to try and pull that Oriana or the Jinx if they can't find the Oriana just because they need to remove that pressure from the team fight just for the first couple seconds for Lee Sin to get his combo off. Yeah. No, I, it was detrimental pull, but uh, Blitzcrank needs to pull that Jinx, needs to pull that Oriana and, and, and lock them up. And it's difficult sometimes, especially when things are getting really chaotic and the pressure's really high and your your nerves are completely on, on the maximum level just because you're like, oh, this could be the fight that makes or breaks the game. And, uh, and unfortunately, it just didn't go the way of Faulkner that time. Zombie... He's going to have to flash out here. Going to be able to make it out, though. Uh, Southern Illinois just shoving down. Has this Baron buff right here. And there's not a lot the Falker can actively do to stop them. Neither Anivia or Malphite are there to contest it. Leeson's going to have to flash away, but it does oh. nothing against the Willow Bear. This is looking dangerous for the side of Falcon right now. Uh, not having the major Leeson. But Zombie gets out with a miracle. Uh, but she goes back in. This, oh, yeah. could spell the end uh, for Falcon right here. Uh, Malphite looking for a heroic entrance. Uh, Mordekaiser pulls the Anivia, uh, doing damage. It looks like it that's going to be it with the yep. Baron buff. That's going to be a wrap. Man. Oh, the Sivir. The Sivir's coming in. The Sivir can clear waves very well, but will it be enough? Uh, the Jinx trying to run away. Uh, Sivir trying to 1v1 the Oriana. The Zanya's hourglass used. Uh, oh, Sivir could have done it. It was so close. It was close. You know, really, it was... It was down to the last wire. Uh, Faulkner had plenty of opportunities there to, to have themselves in the game, and they did. They were for so long. It was just that last dragon fight pushed things over the edge and unfortunately not able to clutch it out. But you know what I will say? I liked a lot of the swat of the switch ups that we saw. I loved the early pressure that Blitzcrank was applying. Yep. I loved honestly the Lee Sin in the jungle was doing wonders. We've seen Fenberg play a lot of different people in the jungle and, and that Lee Sin pick was able to farm effectively, one V one effectively and and co go in for ganks really effectively. I loved the all around usefulness of it and and I liked a lot of what I saw. It just unfortunately wasn't able to come together right at the very end. Yeah, no, it's, it, it was a very close match. I thought it was the closest one of the season, Other, like overall. Mm -hmm. uh, very balanced and a, a lot of opportunities, good opportunities taken by Faulkner and a lot of good plays made by Faulkner. I, I think that there were just a few things that we just misplayed just a tiny bit on. We could have done a tiny bit better, but overall, very proud of how Faulkner bounced back from that first game and how they, they managed to... to Take a take a few wins, take a good yep. few good fights, take objectives, go after the right targets, uh, and like, and just feed into Finberg and si and the Siver there, mm -hmm. uh, and try to get a win. Yep. Pretty proud of our of our team here tonight. Unfortunately, it is going to go to Southern Illinois two to zero. That brings us to one and three on the season. Give us just a quick minute, and we'll be back with an interview with one of our players. Eventually. And we're back and uh, very happy with our performance tonight. Uh, League of Legends uh, did lose tonight 0-2, to two, but there were so many good opportunities that, that, that they were able to learn from, so many amazing plays that we saw happen. Uh, we have Mr. I'm Bleu, uh, and we are curious, the audience, the, yeah. the recorded audience, yeah. we're curious to see what the, what the strategy was going into the second game. How did you guys bounce back from that first game? So, yeah. Um... We, we had a lot of strategy talks as we were taking our walk around after the first game. And one thing that we immediately noted was we did not need to ban an AD carry. And so we did not ban an AD carry the second game because we just, we figured that was their weakest link in the bot lane. So, and that proved to be for the most part true. One other thing that was great is we decided we needed to play a hyper aggressive bot lane. So we picked characters like Sivir and like Blitzcrank who can really get in there, do a ton of damage, lots of crowd control, great stuff, and get out quick before 
their jungle shows up. <laughs> yeah, dude, that that was great. You guys had a, a solid gold lead in the in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You guys were dominating. Uh, you had priority mid lane. You had priority bot lane, and you went after a dragon. Really good communication all around. What do you think happened to where the other team just tipped the scales just a tad? It. Honestly, I feel like as a whole, we did get a little overconfident about halfway through the game. Just ha had a little bit too much hubris going into it, <laughs> um, and we one or like we made one or two careless mistakes, and that just kind of snowballed into you know the the problem was we had gotten ahead, and so we had bounties on us. They killed us, got those bounties, proceeded to entirely swap the snowball around. Yeah. No, it's, it's definitely a game of snowballing, and mm -hmm. whoever gets uh, stronger, faster, wins the fight, yeah. uh, finds the right target. Uh, Finberg was going crazy with the with the Lee Sin. He was. He was always finding the back line. Um, and what, what do you think could have been just something that you could have done a little bit better uh, to win more team fights, maybe find the, find the right target, maybe, maybe yeah. make an early pick to go after the objective? Uh, what, what do you think? Well, for me personally, I would say a lot of my issues in most of the team fights was positioning. Mm -hmm. I didn't position around the Oriana correctly, and you'll see later in the game, she got like three kills on me in three different team fights just because I positioned bad, and she was able to get a stray ult on me. Mm -hmm. And also just saving my cooldowns, you know, Sivir's spell shield that blocks whatever ability. It like that's her biggest cooldown if she doesn't have that she's kind of a sitting duck mm -hmm. she's fast but she you can hit her and so i feel like i use that a little too liberally okay yeah. that, that's awesome uh but like like i'm glad that you can already like realize something that you can like work mm -hmm. on and improve on for the next game yeah uh i'm I'm actually very excited to see the changes in the future uh, because we saw a lot of swaps around tonight. We saw uh, a lot of different styles that you guys maybe hadn't shown before in the previous game, uh, like uh, the hyper-aggressive uh, bot lane uh, and the early game. Well, the early game jungle was always a thing. Isaac yeah. always goes in uh, early. That's his signature. Yeah, that, that's, his, that's his little move there. But uh, he does it so well. Uh, I honestly, I, I loved how you guys adapted to the team that you had mm. and focused on, okay, we need to focus this lane more. We need to do this instead. Uh, different changes are essential and keeping a positive attitude is also amazing. So you guys did great. Very proud of you. Thank you. Uh, and we are excited to have the next League of Legends match next Tuesday against, I don't know who, because yeah. I don't have a little prompt or anything. Uh, but... Next Tuesday, mystery match. Uh, and then the next Overwatch game is going to be this Thursday at 9 against I don't know who. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to mention our production, Gabe and Coach Colquitt. Uh, they did an excellent job keeping everything running, uh, even though there were a lot of technical difficulties. Uh, and thanks to I'm Blue. And special thanks to my assistant, Rafe uh, Thrash, for uh, helping commentate and having a great time with me and thank you so much for watching stay on the course that you're currently on friends the preceding broadcast was an official presentation of faulkner university it may not be redistributed without the express written consent of the faulkner university athletic department regitar usa high res arena is sponsored by regitar usa the National Anthem was performed by the Faulkner University Chorus. If you would like to learn more about the Faulkner Esports program, visit our official website at FaulknerEagles.com or follow us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram for all the latest news and events. Thank you for watching, and Soar Eagles!